episode of Outcast Icons. And as always, guys, if you are enjoying the series, please do leave a like on the video. Now, in our last episode, we were sadly beaten 1-0 at home by Meep. And, I mean, Meep is basically the sound we made as this game went because, oh, Jesus. And the injuries started. And, I mean, they only had one shot on target in the entire game. It was their goal. But then so did we. Um, so, I mean, I don't think anyone deserved to score in this game. It was a terrible, terrible fixture. But like I said at the time, is this the start of another downturn? And, of course, it was. Um, it actually got really bad. And it's sort of picking up again now. It, it's... The injuries just are completely destroying us. Whenever we get a couple of them, we're just completely screwed. Um, also, the club is now in administration, which doesn't help. Uh, it means that they're basically going to just sell anyone anytime they like. We're going to have no money in the summer. I've tried to re... Um, I've tried to extend some of the contracts to some of the players. It just won't let them. So basically what would happen now is if we stayed in the summer, these players' contracts would all expire and we would have no money to bring in any more players. So next season, if we stayed another year, we would literally have a squad of about seven players. So it would be mostly greyed out people and we just it's just an impossible situation to be in, basically. Um, which means that I think I've had to take the decision to basically say, you know, at the end of this season, we are going to leave the club. Um, it's a shame, but I just cannot see us getting promoted with the form we're currently getting. And the injuries just cripple us whenever we get the chance. Also, now, players are coming to me and now they're unhappy with the financial situation and claiming that I should somehow be able to fix that, apparently. Um, I said, you know, it's the board. They're the ones that have got us in this. Pro well, that's what's happened. And... Yeah, players just go, no, no, it's your fault. You can fix this, apparently. Uh, so I'm just going to take £800,000 out of my back pocket and give it to the club, and then we should all be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how it works, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so that's a big issue. A big issue. That is the big issue right now. Um, but what I'm planning to do, basically, is after the season finishes, you know, I'm going to try and make... We're still going to keep on plugging away and try to get ourselves the highest finish as possible. You know, we've had two really... For me, based on the projections of this club and the sort of expectations, we've had two very successful seasons at this club, I have to say, despite the shocking financial situation. I think we've been... What we've done, we've done in spite of that, and I, I think that gives me some positives. Now, what I plan to do is, because the Cypriot season finishes, as you can see there, uh, right at the end of March, it's going to give us some time. So what I'm going to do is... because The problem is my contract doesn't expire to the end of June, and that is not good enough for me. So what I might do is resign, but not now. I will wait until the end of the season and then resign, because... If we do that, then I can spend the next few months looking for um, a job. But because it's in that last part of the season, you can do the whole postpone till the end of the season thing. So I should be able to then um, try to accumulate lots of job offers, hopefully, so we can pick the right one to take us forward. And I think that's the best thing to do right now. But for now, obviously, we've still got to concentrate on this season. I do want to try and finish as high as physically possible. And you never know, we could pull off a miracle. Um, at least I think the slump was slightly smaller this time, but I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. So we started things off with a 3-0 defeat away at Aris. And as you can see, two more injuries and a red card. Hey, you may as well just not bother, really. We were pretty awful. I mean, we weren't bad, but they missed a p penalty as well, and the own goal was an absolute shitter. In fact, I'm going to show you, just because it, it was literally a cross that my goalkeeper just batted into his own net. I thought it hit their player when I actually initially saw it, but it doesn't. My, if you watch my goalkeeper, it just hits the goalkeeper, and he actually bats it behind him into his own net. The ball is travelling the opposite direction. Shocker. Like, we weren't... <sighs> We were not very good in this game. They had some really good chances, and as you can see, but the injury to Constantinou and the red card for back at, uh, Bamichas, you know, it's another three-match ban now. Um, he was sent off in the 90th minute for... Uh, sorry, in the 88th minute for giving away a penalty when we're already 3-0 down. No need to do it. Um, they missed the penalty anyway, but now we lose him for three games as well. Um, disappointing. And then in our next... Um, I mean, this was the worst one of the bunch. To lose 4-0 at home to one of the newly promoted sides who are struggling, and... What makes it worse is if you look look at it. I mean, how? They scored four goals with six shots on target and we couldn't manage it. And it's not like they had loads of clear-cut chances compared to us. They had three, we had two. No half chances apiece. That is it. And yet they've won 4-0. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, you know when it's going wrong when you're getting these results. And unfortunately, we're just so inconsistent at the moment. And it's a problem. And I just don't think we're ever going to be able to get a level of consistency that's going to be able to benefit the club in any way. Next up, though, we had Kami Otissa. And you know how against Kami Otissa we always seem to be able to come up with a result. And we actually did this away from home. Um, a couple of players came back from injury. And thankfully, goals from Angelo Catania and Giovanni Galea, the two heroes of our season that are the only reason we're doing anything, really. And Nicolau as well. Um, 
have come up there too. Unfortunately, the squad morale's low now because of obviously the squad's unhappy because of the financial situation, which, and I tried to appease them with a team meeting, didn't work. They just claimed that I should be able to fix it magically. Um, so that's useful. You know, I, I could sell my best player, I could, and then we'd get 1.6 thousand pounds. Um, and that would go, that's a bit like, that's a drop in the ocean in this problem. Thing is though, even though we've got this huge debt, uh, and when I had it to the point where um, our books were balanced in terms of our wages, so to the point where, um, you know, we were in a wage surplus, so to speak, we were still losing £60,000 a month. So, I don't know, it, it's a terrible situation. We've got no income, really, of any sort, because we've got such terrible match day uh, revenues and whatnot. It's a shocker, uh, which is a pain. Next up, though, we had APEP. And if you remember, we got a bit battered by APEP earlier in the season uh, it, at away from home and this time at home we sort of rescued it um if i'm honest it was a poor performance from us although i mean they took the lead through kiriaku but then we managed to equalize quickly after through sortiryu now, the thing is it was sort of like a bit of a cat and mouse type of game where they started off with one system so i started with one system at half time i then switched because it wasn't working but what they then did was switch to the system that i knew it would work against so we ended up switching it back again and i think it kind of very nearly worked but as you can see uh panagopoulos scored and then we managed to equalize in the 90th minute through angelo catania at least making it you know stopping the rot of defeats if nothing else you know, it's two games without defeat again hopefully we can start be the start of an upward spiral but you just don't know and of course you know We've now got ourselves a game against Arimi, and that's going to be tough. I mean, Arimi have had a couple of poor results as of late, which means they're not too far in front of some of the other sides now. But look at the goal difference on Paphos. They've really handed down some beatings on some teams. Um, so at the moment, we're still not, we're only four points off of that playoff spot again. So it, again, a good run would give us right back in there, but you just, you just don't, I just don't feel like we're going to get the consistency. And I think sixth, seventh, or fifth are the sort of places we're probably going to end up finishing uh, this season. One of those sort of positions again. Um, and it's a shame, but I just really don't know what else we can do in this situation. We've done well, and I think Millington's gained a lot from that. In fact, I'm going to show you his... Uh, can I do that? Yeah. Uh, profile. So, as you can see, something... You know, his tactical coaching is up to eight now, so we're actually starting to look a lot better on that sense. And at one point, um, we were level on games won and games lost, and our win percentage was nearly 40% at one point. Um, I also love that... Oh, my best opinions and worst opinions have changed. Uh, it's just just hate Kara now. Um I don't know why, but apparently we hate him. So, you know, hashtag down with Kara. Kara out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. But it is. But it's ours. <laughs> We're 40 years old now, apparently, as well. So he's got to try and get himself a... I don't know. I feel like we can move on and upwards, though. I think we've had a good experience in Cyprus, and I feel that it's going to stand us in good stead. At least we've got ourselves some tactics that are starting to work now. Um, you know, if we could get a, to a solid team without injuries all the time and a bit more backup, because I know you might see all these players. Most of them aren't registered, and those that are, most of them are youth players that are absolutely terrible and all seem to be in the same pissing positions. We've got so many right backs, it's unbelievable. Um, so, top goal scorer is Catani with 13, which is actually not bad. Assists, Nicolau has six, player of the match. Catania has five yellow cards. Pagelis, who I think was suspended for one of these games as well and has missed a couple of them as well. Um, six red cards for Constantino and Bamakas, obviously. Average rating. Catania, one of the few. I mean, there's still four players that have averaged, of course, you know, uh, Petru has played one substitute appearance and scored a goal, so fair play to him on that one. Aerial challenges, 29 for Sortiriu. Key passes, 58 for Constanti. It's interesting for a left winger. Key tackles Sortiriu as well. He's been solid. 204 interceptions as well. And as you can see, most valuable player is worth, is worth a grand and a half. So what use would it be us selling anyone, really? Because it's not going to do anything. Um, so yeah, with the club and administration, I, I just don't know what's going to happen. Now, I, they may not even offer me a new contract. They have not talked about it, about it yet. But um, anyway, we'll see. Um, I'll be turning it down anyway. And I think that it will be best if we move on. But it gives us a chance with a perfect summer then to actually find the, the right job for us rather than just taking the first one that comes along. We can try and find the best one with the best sort of, hopefully, stable finances that we can then use to get our next coaching badge and move ourselves forward with a club that looks stable and maybe we can take them on and have more than a couple, maybe more than two seasons there. Maybe have a sort of three or four or five year sort of career at one of these clubs and really start to push on and make a name for ourselves finally. Um, but at least we've managed to steady the ship and it's certainly not been a disaster unlike it has been at... Um, H-I-F-K. Um, it's just been a disaster in other senses. Anyway, let's get into the game. Ooh, they're playing a back three. 
Okay, well, since we're away from home, I'm going to go with our away tactic, or the one we've been using away from home quite a bit um, against sort of teams that pack the midfield. So we're going to use this one. The issue, of course, thankfully we've got some players back as well, is you know the lack of players in the middle. I'm wondering if Constantino is fit. He is, actually. I'm going to put him in instead of Nicolau. Um, because, I mean, I know he's not fully fit, but when you look at that, I think I'd rather have him in there. And then the possibility of changing by bringing Nicolau off the bench later. Uh, that's the way I'm looking at this anyway. But you can see what I mean about defenders. Look at the sheer amount of defenders we have in the team. I mean, admittedly, a lot of these can't play, but, like, n there's no... S there's, like, one central midfielder. It, we are lacking desperately in the centre, and that's a real problem. Um, so there we go. Uh, let's just do this. We're going to have to try and... Hope. I mean, we at least we're on what I would seem to think is a good piece of form lately, you know. A win and a draw, I suppose. Um, it's on the up bounce, hopefully. I'd really like to think that if we can, that means that we'll be able to get something here. But then again, it, this could also be the start of another down bounce. And when you can think, you know, when you look at it, if it is, then we could be in some trouble because we've only had a sort of two game upward run then. Um, but hey, we'll do our best. And I'm hoping that this tactic might work better away from home because we'll be surrendering a bit more of the ball naturally to them anyway. But we've got to keep an eye on the sort of systems they're playing. I mean, they're clearly, clearly keeping a lot of possession to start with, and that's fine by me. Today, this system's more about taking our chances when we get presented with them and having some shots when we get the chance. Oh, lovely! Right, good. It's the start of the downside. Um, Giovanni Galea, that's our top striker injured now. Um, <laughs> okay, so luckily we've got a ready-made replacement, but... Catania has just been solid this year, but Galea's still done a good job for us, but first substitution's already been made, so that's, I'm guessing, a sign of things to come. I, I imagine we can expect a red card and another injury in this game, uh, if I'm basing this on the way things have been going. Uh, they seem to come along like buses for us. We've managed to limit them to absolutely no shots so far, but we're not having many ourselves. But then again, remember, these guys are the best team in this league, so we've still got to be careful. That's really poor, actually, to allow that to happen. Of course they've scored with the first shot of the game. Um, good stuff. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games, guys. I can tell. Um, we've, we've not even started that badly, but when you can see the first shot they've had, uh, and it's not even a close ranger, it's a long-range shot, and the goalkeeper probably should have had that. I don't know why they all got drawn to it. I mean, it's, he's not even inside the D. It's not like he... Oh, dear. Unbelievable. Uh, well, actually, it's not unbelievable at all. It, it sort of goes perfectly. Is that Tavru? I don't know if that's the same one we had last season. Uh, it sort of goes hand in hand with how we played this season. Constantinu, Castanas. You know, not that I'm saying we've been the better side in this game, because we had only had a couple of long-range shots, but we were limiting them at least. But I guess, you know... Ooh, Constanti, go on, son. And it's saved. <laughs> I wish we could score those types of goals. Those really dodgy angled ones. Constanti's ball to the edge of the box. Galea, absolutely awful first touch. Lob downfield and thankfully Castanas will mop that up. But hey, I actually think we've started quite strongly. Constanti's through here and a poor first touch from him. It's... Oh, I give up. I'm so sick of the fucking injuries every single time. Like this... We don't have any training facilities. We've got no ability to... And unfortunately, we're just going to keep getting the injuries. That's both of our strikers injured in this game already. And we're not even at half time yet. Uh, now we're playing a sort of makeshift strike. I mean, admittedly, he can play there, but that is not his uh, natural position. He is always oh, through here. Go on, Nicolau. Go on, son. No, of course not. Um, so coming into half time here, we've had two injuries, lots of good opportunities, and they've scored with their only shot on target. Um, that's right, only shot at all. It's a shame because I feel we've been quite good today at times, and the tactic seems to be working in terms of we've got more possession, we're having more chances, lots more shots with the better team. But you know, if you can't take your chances, and I, I'm not knocking him because the fact is, you know, he's the third choice striker who's been thrown into the lion's den. So that's the second injury. I assume now we just need the sending off to complete the hat-trick. Uh, like, several times this year we've had red card and two injuries in games. It's really odd. Oh, whoa. Um, are we sure about that? Let's go for it. Um, we need to come back, but I don't want to go on attacking just yet because I feel like it might just enable them to get a little bit... Constanti's going to get sent off, isn't he? The thing is, I can't bring anyone else on because I don't think there's anyone that's good enough to play in that role. He's so important to us. He's not been. He's been booked quite a few times this season without getting a red card. To be fair to him, so um, Pagalis, that's poor. Oh, it's over the top. Nicolaus through again here. Go on, son. Take your chance this time. Nope, you've missed it again. <laughs> Fuck my life. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, we we deserve to be at least level in this game, if not winning it. Frankly, when you look at the oh, that's such a poor touch from him. Um, I oh, well done. Good stuff. Ball in, cleared away. But we've, we're keeping the pressure on at least. I still feel we can turn this game around. Remember, these guys are top of the league and we're actually making them look pretty poor on their own ground. 
So that takes some doing. We've got a lot of yellow cards, though. We may have to make some... Well, we've only got one more sub left as well. Constanti's balling. Nicolau! And he's hit the post. <laughs> and pulls it back across. Cipriano, that's better, finally. And we've really, really deserved that. We've played incredibly well today, and I would be absolutely gutted if we didn't get anything from this game, given how well we've been playing. I thought the chance had gone there, but Nicolau, really good awareness to find Cipriano at the back post, and it is 1-1 here, but I don't think this game's done yet. They've not been good enough so far. Uh, what are they doing tactically? They're still playing their 3-5-2. I think we've got more goals in us, frankly. Uh, you know, looking at the stats in this game, I feel we've got more in us. Um, I think we can go and win this, and that would be absolutely massive. for the Oh, and there's the red card. Good stuff. Um, I don't know you could say, well, you could have taken one of them off. Yeah, but which one? There's loads of them on bookings, unfortunately. Um, so that's the arbitrary red card. Uh, I assume they're going to win the game now, I would assume. Um, we're not going to go, mm, great. Have we got defenders on the bench? Well, we've got no choice. Um, I'm going to take off... Uh, I don't, like, he's on a booking, so I want to take him off. But at the same time, he's a lot better than him. And I think we kind of need a ball-winning midfielder. I know that sounds, it's a risk, but I just think that we probably need a better player on the pitch right now if we're going to hold on to this. Um, we're going to stay on... What are we doing for possession? 50-50. It might be wise to drop to a sort of counter style here. Um, and I'm sure by doing this, obviously the hindsight police will be on my back because whatever I do, someone's got a better opinion on it. And that's, of course, that's naturally going to happen. But we have to make a decision sometimes. And in previous occasions, people have said to do this instead of what I normally do. So I'm going with what you always say. And if it's wrong, then it's wrong. Um, they've still only had one shot in the entire game, which is actually quite impre... Oh, off the crossbar. Uh, not one shot in the entire game, one shot on target. We've made all our subs now. We need to just sort of... Maybe we should drop a little deeper, actually, just because... Uh, I don't like to put normal instructions on in this one. Look at the amount of yellow cards we've got. But we're still... I mean, a one-all draw isn't a bad result here. I just feel like we probably deserved a bit more than that, really. Look at the stats for this game. Um, I feel like, you know, we've had a lot of long shots, and of course that has contributed. But the fact is, four good opportunities that cannot be ignored. Um, and a one-all draw would be a reasonable result, I'd say. Well done, goalkeeper. Well done, goalkeeper there, right. Um... Mm. Don't want to get stuck in. We might use tighter marking just to get a little bit closer to them. Try and stop them from... Well done. Well done. Good save. I mean, we're up against it here, but... Actually, we might as well go defensive for this last few minutes just to try and make sure because there's no point in being on counter at the moment. We just need to try and... Oh, wrong button. Uh, oh, actually, I might as well leave it now. <laughs> I forgot to pause it. We'll just go with this. And get, if we can get out of here with a one-all draw, I suppose it's a good result. It's just disappointing given how well we've actually played to see just everything go wrong. The problem is, though, guys, that now with these injuries and suspensions, the next few games are going to be absolutely impossible to win because of the injuries and suspensions. Um, I feel we were unlucky not to win that one. Uh, it's a shame. But I guess that's the good little bit of form there. I mean, we're seventh in the league again now, <laughs> amazingly. Um... But we took a point away at the top side in the division, so I'm pleased with the lads for that. Felt we could have done better, really, but when you get those kinds of injuries and suspension red cards in the game, I don't really sure what else you can do. Um, we're doing our best, but we are fighting a losing battle with this team. We are sort of trying to stop the Titanic from sinking using a bucket of water, trying to just, yeah, pay bail it over the side. It's not going to happen. So... In our next episode, of course, guys, we'll be doing the last game of the season against Ormonia. Who knows where that will land us? Can we manage to sort of pull ourselves out of this slump? Uh, not even a slump. Can we manage to get ourselves another win and go on a little good run for this last part of the season? I just don't know if that's going to be possible. We're going to try our hardest to try and finish as high as possible um, so we can leave with our heads held high knowing that we did the best we could. So, guys, if you like what you've seen, please do drop a like on the video. And if you'd like to even more than that, please subscribe to my channel for more Red Star and Outcaster icons in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock clock and I will see you guys in the next episode for the final day of the season and what will very much likely be our final game in charge of uh, um, Aheronis against Ammonia. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.